Hey everyone, what is going on? So today is a bit of a weird video. Um, I, at the moment, can't really get to anything in my room because I've had to fill it up with stuff because um, we're having plumbing done in my house. So um, yeah, a lot of stuff hasn't going in my room so I can't really get to places. So yeah, it's kind of going to be a bit of a chat video about series 10. Uh, I'm going to switch camera angles in a minute um, uh, to my face, but I thought quickly let's go over uh, the latest issue of Doctor Who magazine. Uh, it's a really nice issue. I uh, really, really, do, I'm enjoying reading it. Uh, I'm currently uh, just got to the Pearl Mackey interview, uh, which is uh, nice. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I've I've not really looked at the previews because I don't want to be uh, have any spoilers. Uh, but yeah, uh, but that's another thing. But yeah, so series ten. So I'm quickly gonna uh, so I'm gonna sort of review the first two episodes and also what I think of the way the direction of the series is going. And if Moffat's season is good, last season, sorry, is going to be any good. So, um, yeah, let's go to the different angles where I can probably talk to you a lot better. So, yeah, so series 10. Um, first two episodes, my thoughts. I thought the pilot was an okay episode. Um, I thought the theory of the puddle sort of being the enemy and it sort of being intelligent water didn't you know that just seemed quite stupid and lazy if i'm honest um you know it, the enemy really just didn't make much sense to me it wasn't an appealing enemy as well like the dark was simon it just didn't appeal to me it just didn't it didn't even seem believable at times as well um and yeah it's certain stuff wasn't explained lack of the moffat story so yeah but i thought bill was an okay companion uh, she had an all right starting. I thought Nardole had um, wasn't as annoying as he was in the uh, Rosamund's River song. I uh, actually quite kind of started to like him as a character, which I never thought I'd say. Uh, but yes, we thought the pilot was meh, meh, a meh sort of story. Um, compared to The Magician's Apprentice, is that the f uh, first one? Yeah, Magician's, Magician's Apprentice. I don't know how I'd compare them. Um, I think they're both good in different ways. I mean, The Magician's Apprentice has lots of classic Daleks coming back. Um, for example, there we have a uh, dead planet Dalek. Uh, but, and that would seem to be like, you know, it doesn't matter how good or bad the story is because, you know, that seems to be the thing when they do big classic things, which I'm hoping doesn't happen with the Cybermen too far this year, but more than that in a minute, that uh, they're, they're bringing classic monsters back, you don't have to worry too much about the story. That seems to be the whole idea about it, which is wrong, really. You, with it bringing back classic monsters, should be the number priority should be the good story but i thought it was an okay starting and then we got on to smile which i really enjoyed i thought it well i said i really enjoyed up to a point and even peter capaldi sort of agrees on this point that the doctor got it wrong in that it, i didn't I just thought, well, th that's just, you know, trying to make new things happen. Because Peter Capaldi said that he believes that Time Lords should and prob and do, you know, if he's if his lore is correct, um, have uh, sort of seeing into the future powers. And if so, then the Doctor wouldn't have known about this. And he would have probably known about this anyway. So it didn't make sense um, that he was doing it. And I thought, yeah, that is spot on. That is real. It is stupid in that way. Uh, so, yeah, I liked Smile. I liked how the Emoji Robots weren't this whole fad thing it was. An actual believable sort of utopia, and I thought, just thought it was um, it was quite enjoyable. Um, I felt that the humans in it though weren't that believable as car. I mean, I guess our first instinct after someone has died who was close to us is to get some form of um, a retribution. But it did seem quite quick, you know. This man's come, and you know, sort of telling you not to do it because there is different ways in that and they all of a sudden straight away blanked him didn't even go well tell us what your, your plan is and that they just straight away went, no no we'll just kill him and then they start to get scared before they're going to shoot them you know if you're filled with rage rage doesn't go like that you know it takes a long time for it to go down so i thought um it was really good up until that point uh but like listen really good up until a point uh but yes yeah, so i thought smile was an okay i'd give that probably i give uh, the pilot, after thinking about it and how enjoyable it was, probably a 5 out of 10 maybe. And I give Smile a 7 out of 10. Um, I think I've only given... I'm trying to think new series stories, I've given 10 out of 10. Uh, I gave Human Nature, Family of Blood 10 out of 10. I gave Doomsday 10 out of 10. And I've, I'd give... A new series... 
I think I'd probably give the two-part Angel one 10 out of 10. And those are the only ones, um, the Series 5 one, those are the only uh, what stories I'd give a uh, 10 out of 10. But yeah, so we're going to uh, move on to Thin Ice. And I'm just going to get the Thin Ice page up just in case I get certain things wrong in Doctor Who magazine. Thin Ice, yeah. So it's... um. It's set uh, in Victorian in the sort of Great Frost. It is a big finished title, uh, so I'm sure they'll be annoyed about that. Um, the setting seems to have been done quite well, um, the way it looks. Although the elephant at the end of Smile did look a bit off. Same with um, the uh, the putting of the uh, Spanish uh, Valencia art city on the cornfields in uh, Cardiff, was it? I think, I think yeah, it was in Wales. That... Um, photo editing it didn't it just seemed a bit 2005 if you understand what i mean and uh, same with the elephant and thin ice it just you know it just didn't look too real but then i guess you know they're not exactly on the biggest budget at the moment um and they spent quite a lot on promotion which you know is the right way to do it um this to try and get the viewing figures up uh but still you know i've got high hopes for this one i think it should hopefully be, um should be an interesting one to watch uh for sure uh, the Pie Man uh, by Peter Sin uh, might be a main character, I'm not too sure. And uh, yeah, some of these captions are very. <laughs> I mean, um, right, Bill. What has Bill seen? The face isn't that shocked. <laughs> you know, he did. I don't know. But yeah, um, I've not sort of really tried to stay away from that. But uh, the next time, first and things that we see, you know, let's be eaten and that. And all this other stuff. Um, it seems like a very, it seems a bit classy Doctor Who. That seems like a very Tom Baker line, you know. It's eating people, so let's get eating. Um, that's you know, yeah, so I do quite that. So I'm interested in this. But uh, uh, episodes that I am really looking forward to, obviously the two parter with the Mondasian Cybermen. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Mark Gates Ice Warrior episodes and uh, Oxygen. I think the episode's called, which apparently is like the scary one. That sounds very, very cool. And um, I, I'd want Doctor Who to go to the point where even me as a 14-year-old step back and go, that is actually kind of scary. You know, that's what Doctor needs to be. Because back in 1970 and that, if you think about uh, think about that, the Autons, if you imagine you're a child, then that needs, that should be scary. Doctor Who needs to be scary. It just Because then it just puts people off. Because of Doctor Who, you know, there's actually that used to be scary and used to scare children. And, you know, I mean, I remember the um, Waters of Mars used to scare the hell out of me when I was a kid. And that was good. That's what Doctor Who should do. It should, you know, all be borderline traumatised um, at times. Not, And that's not to say every episode should be really scary, not worry about plot. But there needs to be that one episode where the monster is so scary that people will look at it and be like, whoa. Um, like when the, um, I remember in my school, when the Ood, when that uh, guy turned into the Ood in the um, Planet of the Ood in Series 4, I remember that was... Re I mean, I looked away when I was a kid because it was scary. Whereas in Doctor Who recent years, I mean, the scariest thing was maybe that Under the Lake. And again, it wasn't proper scary. It was just, you know, a bit creepy, I guess. Which is what the... It seems to be Moffat era, a bit creepy. But that's it. You know, nothing... You know, like Hyde as well. Just a bit creepy, you know, nothing... Nothing too major. But yeah, so uh, that was... So that's my sort of look at series 10. Um, I'm going to probably do uh, another video looking at the episodes uh, again. Um, but yeah, do tell me your thoughts. Uh, I know uh, some people have really enjoyed the pilot and I can't see why. It, it's not... It was not. I mean, it's going to be that story that I think everyone will look back on as uh, in The Last Mafia Owns Go. Yeah, I remember the puddle. I remember the water girl, I remember the Mavellans, I remember the Dalek, I remember the pot of Sonics. Don't know what order that happened in. I feel like it'd be one of those stories. Um, I am planning maybe when series 10 is all done for me to watch them all in one go and sort of then do a whole series overview, hopefully as a live stream. It would be nice with different people to get their different opinions, but sort of like one person to get their opinion, I me mean, try and challenge my opinion, next person, save it. Because if everyone's in there, you can't hear each other, you know, it's just, it's not fun for people. And people's uh, points get missed, and it's just not fun. But yeah, uh, so yeah, and also, um, quickly, I want to add a um, note. Uh, where is it? Come in. Come in. Now, I've seen money grabs. Dear 
God, is that a money grab? Hey, it says, um, you know, Doctor 11th, Doctor 12th, Doctor 4th, Doctor 1st. If the company thought it through, and what would sell in our modern society with Doctor Who? This is purely from public perception. Doctor 12 wouldn't sell. Public perception. That's not my opinion. That's not Doctor Who fans. Public perception. Doctor 10 would sell. So first of all, there's an issue. Second, have you seen how much merchandise I'm putting out with that? It's ridiculous. You know, it's... <laughs> I've now, it's just the biggest money grab since John Sim decided to return to the series, even though his master was dead. But enough, on, but that's for a video for a different day. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, yep, sorry for no normal sort of videos, but you've probably seen the background there. Yeah, the Tardy set's behind all that, and it's not easy to do reviews. Uh, I can grab my figures, but I want them to be done in the same place. So I can do these videos, DVD history, I'd probably be able to do one. Um, that was if I had all the DVDs for 2013, and I don't, and I want to savour it because I want it to be have them all so you can see a proper trend. I've got the arc now, so less uh, DVDs are being used to represent stuff and all that. And yeah, uh, 2013 episode, because it will be the 50th anniversary year episode of Doctor Who, if you get know what I mean, is going to be a big one. Uh, plans? Well, I'm going to make, when we go to the collection, it is going to be very organised. I'm going to have, a comp I'm going to have loads of different areas so you can see what the original editions were, box sets, what they look like. I'm going to get them in order so you can see trends of you know, uh, that tail stuff, you know, what does that seem like a trend? Um, the way box art changes on box sets, because there is a quite a dramatic change from Tardis Roundels to sort of scales, I guess. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be really interesting to hopefully look at. And, and, uh, would that be, it'd be the last proper one. There will be one more video after that. And that video after that will, will go straight out. So, the both of these episodes will go straight out. And then the, the closest weekend to those two videos there will be a massive live stream. I've sort of touched on this before, sort of talked about it, but this is more of an official sort of thing. I'm going to try and get as many people into this live stream, whether it's people in the chat, people it, actually in the video, or people um, making pre-recorded stuff or making pre-notes. And we are just going to talk about the DVDs, classic Doctor Who DVDs from uh, English and North American hopefully, and maybe to touch on Australian stuff and that. And I know Germans have uh, had box sets. We're going to really, I'm going to really do my research and really have one final salute to the DVD history, which is probably is the biggest series on my channel. And the spin-off series uh, will hopefully happen with action figure history and VHS history, hopefully, because both of those seem really enjoyable to do. And action figure history is something I'm quite good at. I just, it will take a while to get that one off the ground because I may have a lot of figures, but original figures are... I'm missing like some of the very first figures. I'm missing quite a few of them, but some of the re but again some of the other first figures. I've got loads of them. So if you got to miss it, it'll take a while. And variants. I'm going to try and get every variant, but I'm not going to buy two ninth doctors if they were both released different times. I'll just say, and then this figure was re-released, and I'll show the figure again. If you understand, I think I found a good a, lot, a reliable website. I've found the action figure archives on the Doctor Who Toys Net, and. Um, yeah, but I need to go through and make sure I can get all the dates and that, and uh, I'll try and be as accurate pos as possible. Uh, but yeah, so um, what to take away from this video? Buy a, 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 a month's Doctor Who magazine because it comes with a really cool poster. Um, uh, watch series 10 because it's actually uh, pretty decent. And uh, uh, what else to say? Um, play Halo because Halo's cool. And I'm re and yeah, uh, the re there has been re that is also a reason for no videos, and also a reason is Halo, because I have been playing a lot of Halo because I got back into it, and um, well, as you can clearly see, I'm a bit of a Halo fan. Um, if anyone uh, watches Red vs Blue, by the way, you will know that it's, it's got a shotgun on his back, and yeah. But anyway, um, can't sound off track there. But yeah, so I'll see you in the next one, guys. And um, yeah, sorry for no videos, and it's good to be making them again. Anyway, see you in the next one which will be tomorrow, hopefully. If not tomorrow, then two videos. No, two videos, three, maybe, Thursday. Uh, I've, got, I've got a messed up schedule. Don't matter. It doesn't matter. I still make videos, and that's all that matters. See you on the next one. Bye.